like to welcome everyone. It's really an honor to be here, and I think this is really a, a spectacular kind of week where you can get 50 plus people together for a whole week uh, to share the same purpose consciously. It's just really, uh, I think you're going to have a spectacular week. And we have so many resources, so many resources available here. Uh, we will be, I know where it has that I will be talking, it has discourse, but I always say I really don't uh, give discourses or lectures so much as it's, it's an open discussion. You know, we call upon the spirit and the questions, the experiences, the miracles that are shared, it's really just us opening up and letting the spirit just wash over us and bring clarity and illumination. And so that's really what it's about. And so we'll have themes, but as usual with these themes, we can get into any uh, topic areas, any subtleties, any of the nuances that are commonly part of the spiritual journey. And um, with all of you here, with us calling upon the Spirit, I just think that this is going to really be a very helpful week in terms of really clearing away a lot of uh, obstacles and debris. And the love is already there. So it's not like you're really trying to attain something or achieve something. It's just more just recognize something that's already here and now and clear away some of the obstacles and the complexity. Because the truth of living in the present moment is extremely simple. Extremely simple. And it's only the ego that tries to make it very complicated. And when we join together, so many of us with this purpose, you know, it's like there'll be a lot of joy, laughter, there'll be a lot of uh, sharing of experiences where they'll go find you know, meet people that will have a lot of parallel experiences that are going on to what you're going through, which is always a wonderful phenomenon because it's like, oh, I'm not alone in this journey. Uh, so and so is going through a, a parallel experience, and and then you can spirit can bring you together and you can bless each other with that. So it makes it easy, you know, it makes you feel like you're not completely out on, on a limb or all alone. And we're going we're gonna to use a lot of different things. We're using movies. Uh, uh, we recently, during this past week, we just updated our movie watchers guide to enlightenment. So I thought one thing I could do for you now, um, Kirsten, could you get the movie watchers guide and maybe just come up and just read the, what the Holy Spirit has to say. Uh, about our movie tonight. It's kind of nice to know the lesson before you watch the movie. Uh, it's a clue what to look for. This is actually called Joe versus the Volcano. This is the movie. Tom Hanks, Megra. This is a brand new guy. You've seen it from this Updated. Okay. Joe versus the Volcano. The spirit awakens the sleeping mind through contrast experiences, beckoning the sleepy one to leave the past of limited beliefs behind and trust that there is a better way. All the world is asleep, and the mind away is constantly amazing in its vastness and grandeur. Nobody knows anything and must believe for a miracle, a leap in faith beyond the past learning and fear into the glorious life. The light seems to blow the little self away. <laughs> no matter what the apparent circumstances, one is always safely held in God's love. All apparent sickness came from yielding to the suggestion of vulnerability and being at the mercy of the body and world. Such erroneous thought is like a brain cloud, you'll hear that word in brain cloud, obscuring natural spontaneity and aliveness. In trusting our intuition and following our heart, one sees the reflection of the light of God in its magnitude. So that's just an example of the way we're going to come at this uh, through discussions and movement and meditation and movies. I, I go around the, the world, I've been in like 21 different countries, and every country I go to, they love the movies. Uh, Hollywood is big everywhere. And they're like the modern day parables. Jesus taught a parable 2,000 years ago. 
Nowadays, they're common movies where people can talk and get discourses about themes that are very important to them. And it's a way of like inviting people to talk, uh, to, to have open discussions about things that are very important, as opposed to just the, the basic stuff about the who, what, where, when, you know, the, the gossip, the news, and so on and so forth, without really talking about these, these themes. So our movie tonight, it's, it's got uh, a lot of humor. It deals with themes about death, uh, fear of death, uh, relationship issues, sickness, uh, fear of commitment, um, and just a whole group of things. And some, some of you might have been in, like, felt like you've been in dead-end jobs or dead-end relationships. Steven Spielberg put this movie together, and at the beginning of this movie, they tried to generate a scene of the worst possible job in the history of the universe. <laughs> and Joe has it. <laughs> it's no wonder he feels sick. <laughs> Uh, because, of course, our mind generates the environment that we see, the job, the boss, the employees, the situation, and it seems like a very, very, very dead-end job. Joe needs a change. And, and the whole movie then launches him on a journey of faith and trust, and that's, that's going to be our first theme as we start off uh, tomorrow. We're going to start off talking about trust. So you get to watch it first in Joe. How did Joe go from the worst job in the world, a dead-end job, into an open heart, into a sense of aliveness, into a sense of wonder and, and uh, joy? So that will be a good uh, springboard for all of us. And the little time that we have here before we take off on our adventure to find the <laughs> restaurant tonight, <laughs> unplanned adventure, synchronistic adventure, you never know. Um, I feel really honored. I mean, I've been traveling since 1991, uh, wherever invited. First, I really spent the first five years of my spiritual journey just with a lot of, of study of scripture, prayer, meditation, a lot of the typical things that people go through. And then I was just really wide open, and in 1991 I received the guidance to start traveling and to take no thought for what I should wear or eat and to Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and let all things be added. And so I've been living like uh, Jesus and the apostles since 1991, and just its doors have opened, and I've kind of gone round and around and around the world. It's nothing that I planned. I didn't plan on this. When I was a child, I didn't visualize it. I didn't, didn't do any uh, visual, vision, vision boards or anything to try to make it happen. Uh, I was very shy and quiet, as many of you know, and so I wasn't planning for this at all. I had nothing like this planned. But it's been very joyful. I've met just thousands and thousands of people and reflections of love on this journey. And also, I'm very honored that uh, we have a team of us here this time. A lot of times, during the first five years, I did a lot of traveling on my own. Uh, so I was just going out, but sometimes I would get paired up with uh, a musician, a singer-songwriter, or uh, someone that would help uh, extend the message. And uh, it was beautiful. Doors, many doors open. And then um, back around 2003, I was invited to start traveling internationally. Because before that, I had just gone to the United States and Canada. So the doors opened up with many miracles to get me down to uh, Argentina, mostly along the coast down there, Buenos Aires and so forth. And my first trip, I had three people traveling with me. And so there was four of us traveling. And it was quite an extraordinary thing to have four of us traveling together on, on a long trip. And so really what's happened uh, this year with Jenny coming from Sweden and Kirsten and Jason coming along with me is uh, I think you're in for a real treat. I really hope you get to spend some time and talk to these people that are traveling with me. Uh, and also with Raj and uh, Tanya, it's just done such a great job. You know, we couldn't even do these kind of retreats if there wasn't somebody really handling, talking on the phone, answering emails, and handling all the logistics. And uh, Anya's here because she's, she's ready for a retreat, too. So she's going to be serving you and taking some beautiful rest time to do that um, uh, 
Uh, Janine, too, has come all the way from Melbourne with us just to show up and to be of service. And so she's going to help us with, I think, some singing. We've got some singing going on. <laughs> Janine has a great voice, so we'll get to hear a lot of her voice and everything. But um, I'd like to just spend a few minutes. We have a few minutes before we leave. Uh, Kirsten, come up. You come up first. I met Kirsten uh, back in 2005. She was over in New Zealand, right across the water here. And she basically uh, was there. Jackie, raise your hand. Jackie and, and a woman named Mia from Sweden brought me over to New Zealand. And we had a wonderful time over there. And Kirsten kept hearing this inner prompt from when I heard the story that she would be going to the United States to come over with me. She kept hearing it over and over from many people. Even when I was traveling with Jackie, she said, I think Kirsten's going to be going to the Peace House. Long before she knew it consciously, there was a plan in motion, and she was to come over. So, so she has come over, and she has, has joined in, and she has gone through so much clearing of the ego, and has so many joyful experiences to share. And she's shared with many of them, but she is available this week. And uh, she's just really committed to really living a life of purpose, devoted purpose, in a very deep, uncompromising way. So I want you to take advantage of that, that we're going to be going into these deep themes, and we'll talk about a lot of deep ideas, but you know how the practical experience and meeting the people who are actually walking through the steps and living through things is so important. And that's what we have available. We have, we have lunches, we have free time. So uh, if you get a chance, you know, when we do these breakout lunches and you have questions from person about how, how do you really put this into practice, how do you really live this, um, that's the time to go go on one of those lunches. You plan to do a Yeah, yeah you gotta be on the silent day. Yeah, on the silent day. Movement kind of thing. It's very, very helpful. She's worked for probably the last year and a half, two years, just perfecting this technique of letting the emotions come up and through graceful movement and course and miracles lessons and everything. So there's <laughs> And Jason, why don't you come up? <laughs> Yeah. Jason has joined very recently with us, and he again has just completely dove right in. You've heard stories about, you know, St. Francis and Mother Tree. St. Francis would all cut their hair, you know, and, and take all these vows and everything. We, we are very, very devoted. Like, we, we, are, uh, devoted, but we don't really have a lot of vows and, and rituals. Uh, at our peace house, we just had two guidelines: no people pleasing and no private thoughts, which is just a fast way of exposing the ego without having a lot of rules and rituals that you got to adhere to. And so, but Jason just came and just quickly dove right in. And I have been, I think, since about 1999. One of my students back around 1999 said, "You're going to be traveling all over the world, David. You're going to need a nonprofit organization." As I'm not into organizations, you know. The present moment can't be organized. He said, yes, but, you know, in terms of just handling donations and traveling and logistics, you know, you have to have a way, a symbol, that will be helpful to you so you can do what you do. He said, okay, go ahead and do what you need to do. He set it up. So we've had this nonprofit foundation for since 1999, but also, as well as traveling, speaking, counseling, writing, laughing, playing, doing all the fun stuff, <laughs> meditating, all the stuff that mystics do. Uh, I still had to handle a lot of logistics in terms of, you know, making sure the light bill gets paid. <laughs> There's a lot of transitions in the spiritual journey. People come and go. Especially if you do everything on a voluntary basis with no paid staff. You know, as you know, you can, if you have any experience with nonprofits, even if you have paid staff, there's a lot of turnover. If you have no paid staff, the cats, the cats, no, no. The cats are the most stable I've ever seen. I feel like the cat of my book has been there all along. But, but Jason has come in, and this past year was the first time I got the guidance from the Holy Spirit to really step back, kind of go off into orbit and just into my joy and happiness. And so he is handling all these logistics. He's like the managing director of the symbol of the foundation. 
And so Jason hears all these prompts from the Holy Spirit. He's got a, a good handle on everything that's happening, and it just makes it smooth for everyone. And so it's also part of the mind training of, of letting the Holy Spirit speak through him now. Because it's the same thing I went through where the first thing you have to do is clear away the debris so you can hear your inner voice. Because uh, you need guidance to take the place of the ego's chatter. And then, once you do that, then the next step is letting the Holy Spirit speak through you, so you have no fear, no embarrassment. You could be more like Jesus. You could talk about God sometimes, if it's appropriate. Uh, in other settings, it's not appropriate to talk about God and Spirit. You just smile and laugh and beam, and people feel <laughs> the love of God, but you know, it has to be what's most helpful. So Jason's been doing a lot of that, where he's just been handling so many things, and so I really hope you go to his sessions, uh, is it like 4 to 5, 30, I think, you know, most afternoons. He'll be getting out the Course in Miracles book and having very open discussions. So you can bring any kind of questions you have. It doesn't matter if you study the Course or not. Uh, if you want to just have a, a, a very <coughs> interactive uh, session, Jason will be there every day. And again, if you get to know him, you're, you're in for a great treat because He's just got a lot of prompts from the Holy Spirit coming in, and it's exciting when you have that happen. And then, Jenny? Excited to have you <laughs> Jenny just answered the call to come over here, all the way from Sweden, the other side of the world. Uh, she just, I said, would you like to come to Australia? And she said, yes. Uh, she said, I said, well, you know, you, you may want to think about it a few days. Said, well, it feels good to me. Yes, yes, I can go, I can go and everything. She had already booked into a quite intensive uh, yoga retreat over there in Sweden, where they were like, eating all kinds of organic foods and how many days of silence? 33 days. 33 days of silence. I mean, and physical rigors and exercises, you know, and not kind of gentle stretching yoga. I mean, you know, the kind of the postures and the poses and, you know, the real rigorous ones. So she was really kind of in a, already in a role that had paid money for a spiritual boot camp uh, out there in rural Sweden. But, but she just prayed on it and she, I said, wait a few days and see what feels right. And she felt that she really was to come. So she has a very graceful, silent presence. She's a wonderful listener, which is really important. Uh, if you need to talk to somebody and you need to pour your heart out, and you don't want them to be giving you a lot of spiritual advice and breaking in every two seconds, and saying, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? That was foolish. Or this that. Just somebody who graciously listens and loves you and everything. Jenny is available for that. She would love to do that. And she'll be there with Raj leading the gentle yoga stretches and the music uh, sessions in the morning from 7 to 8. And then uh, if you want to, she's just available, you know, throughout the day, different break times and free times to talk to you. She's also been told by a psychic that her, her purpose is really healing. And so she's to be a healer. And already uh, several days ago, maybe last week, we were driving back from a, a gathering, maybe it was in Brisbane, somewhere around there, and, and Jason, she just was doing a little hands-on healing in the back seat. Jason, what was your experience with that? Oh, it was blissful. <laughs> <laughs> she just felt this energy just start to come pour through her, and so she just started doing some hands-on with Jason with his head, and, the back, and just, she went, hmm, I feel my function coming in. <laughs> you know how psychic can tell you you're to be a healer. But what are you going to do? What are you supposed to do? You know, go take a, a course in healing, or you know, or or do you just have to be willing to let the spirit pour through you and cultivate it in your heart? So, so that's another thing that she's just excited about uh, the, the, the feeling, the healing energy pouring through. So, too, if you're going through something someday and you just feel like you need to time, spend some time one on one, she would be glad to be with you. And it takes a lot of willingness too. She's also been traveling with me, and she's coordinating my European uh, travels, which are coming up beginning on May 8th. So I'll be like two months in Europe in six different countries. And again, you know, for me, it's, I just love to show up and shine my light and everything, but there's a lot of logistics that go in. You know, even in the days of Jesus and the Apostles, imagine 12 guys, you've got to handle food, lodging, all the stuff that Raj is doing for this gathering, and she, you know, she does it. She's been calling airlines and 
communicating with people. Sometimes people do a gathering like this for the first time and they're frightened. Uh, they're like, oh my gosh, people are going to show up and I, I've never done this before. And she's got to be there just to email them, talk to them on Skype or the phone, just gently coax them and say, it's going to be great. The Spirit's in charge. Uh, don't worry. Uh, all you have to do is just show up and have, be willing. You don't have to be an expert at putting these things on. So, thank you for coming. Thank you. And Raj, come on. <laughs> Raj is such a big, big part of, of why we're even uh, down here. Uh, we were just, I just went to organize the fish and chips on Tuesday night. Tuesday night, it's the trip night. Make sure I can shut the fish and chips up. The Holy Spirit said, wait, but wait. And the guy said, oh. Oh, apparently I'm opening Tuesday night for you. <laughs> and what about the, the thing on Saturday morning? You should tell them about how that worked out. Oh, that was we good. stopped in at this restaurant today, and Raj just says, this is where we're going to be coming, you know. And so he went again to the guy and said, we're going to be coming with, with 50 people and everything. And, and he said, no, no, Saturday morning in the middle of the school holidays, no. <laughs> and I said, we're closed at that said, hour of the morning. I said, you know, well, we're coming. And he said, oh. Well, he said, we'll just have to do the best we can. And I said, well, I'm trying to get them to come in sort of slowly dribble in rather than all hit you at once. And I said, we'll be here about quarter to eight. He said, but we don't open until 8.30. <laughs> and then his eyes lit up and he said, oh, but we will on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not our to be rearranged. I'm having restaurant experience. <laughs> But Raj, we really wouldn't be here, all the four of us coming and everything, because Raj, I just don't feel like there's anything to promote in terms of myself. You know, I feel like I'm just having a, an experience of the present moment. So I haven't tried to promote myself or orchestrate things around the world. I just get invited. But actually, well, Raj, right, you? you invited me. <laughs> he invited me. He was the first one. He invited me to come down here, and then nobody booked uh, for <laughs> the thing. Yeah, it was the rare time. It's just you and me, wasn't it? Yeah, that was just us. <laughs> uh, it was, was going to be this big international thing. You know, with Gary Bernard and yeah. Jim and all these people. And, and nobody booked. And well, we said, spent a fortune internationally promoting it, and two people actually said they might come. Uh -huh. Two! We were expecting like 200. But that invitation got me then. That's when Jackie and Mia and Sybil will get him David to come to New Zealand. So that was my first visit here to the South Pacific. So that came from there. And then as we came around, it, it turns out, you know, that, that we were just kept talking, talking. And I think there was a point when. Uh, Raj and Suze have a, an, an old motorhome, Kobe, that they keep parked in Joshua, Joshua Tree, Tree California. Yeah. And uh, they sent me a long email one time because they took, it was a very joyful trip with a lot of miracles, but so many things broke down on one trip. Even things that people at, at these places where they fixed the motorhomes had never seen broken. They couldn't believe that those kind of things. So in one sense, it was, they didn't call it the trip from hell or anything, but it was kind of this email like, what are we missing? Uh, why would we have such a journey? You know, where they go into prisons, they're all over the place shining their light. Why would we have such a struggle? And I, we talked a little bit about expectations and how if you expect anything to be any certain way, then that's something that needs to be released. So then, that's my best one probably. <laughs> <laughs> it continues. <laughs> Raj did, did invite us, and so Raj has been like a, a major, major reason why you know we've been able to come, and I've been able to come to do tours along the east coast of Australia these, these last three years, and it's a major part of the reason why we can all be here today, just because he's he's tuned into Christ, he's tuned into the Spirit, and he was able to find a place up here that was reasonable for all of us, so that we could all come. I mean, considering eight days and seven nights, you know that's that's getting into quite a large chunk of time. But uh, that's really what you do well as far as just give it over to the Holy Spirit and then flow with it. And so you can see already we're flowing and it's six o'clock. So <laughs> there we are. Okay, so we'll flow into dinner. So there's also a group of people coming about 645. What are they called? There'll be somebody coming. <laughs>